I want to try and introduce Hamiltonian mechanics in a hopefully more satisfying way. I want to, to look at the equation, understand what they mean, and also why they must be that way, why we have those particular equations and not others. So that the way that we're going to look at it, we're going to look at Hamiltonian mechanics from five different angles. First, we're going to look at the math and the geometrical interpretation of that math. Then we're going to look at it in terms of physical measurements. Then we're going to look at it in terms of thermodynamics, in terms of information theory, and in terms of state definition and state mapping. And what we're going to see is that Hamiltonian mechanic coincides with assuming deterministic and reversible evolution. So the first thing, we have to look at the mass. And these are the Hamilton equation for one degree of freedom. The derivative of x in t is equal to the derivative of h in p. And the derivative of p in t is equal to minus the derivative of h in x. Now, I find it easier to understand this if we break it up into two separate pieces, because they're going to tell us two separate things. So we're going to have, in the middle, we're going to uh, define this Sx and Sp, and we're going to say that Sx is equal to the derivative of x in p and in t, and Sp is going to be the derivative of p in t. And on the other side, we have the relationship between Sx and Sp, to h and their derivative. So now we can just concentrate in understanding what Sx and Sp are. And what they are are basically components of a field, of a vector field defined in phase space. So for any point in phase space, we're going to have a, a vector which has component Sx and Sp. And now we're going to look at the relationship between s and our trajectory, our x and p in time. So if we take x of t and p of t, and we trace them in phase space, this, this gives us the trajectory of the point particle that the point particle is taking. Now, if we take the derivative in time of this trajectory, what we're going to have is a vector that is tangent to the trajectory. It's going to tell us where the point uh, from here is moving. And what this equation is telling us is that that vector, that vector at each point is just going to be equal to our vector field. So we can understand the vector field S as that vector field that given any point in phase space, given any state, it tells us where the next state it is, where the evolution is continuing. Now, the another way of saying this is that the trajectories that the point particles are going to take are the field lines of S, because they are going to be the lines where S is always tangent to the curve. Okay, now I understand S and its relationship with the trajectory. Now we have to understand the, the relationship between S and H. So H is just a scalar field, so given a point in phase space, H is just going to give us a value. And what we are drawing here are the lines of equal h, or contour lines. So for example, all points on this line, h is going to be k0, here is going to be k1, here is going to be k2, and so on. The first thing that we want to do on h is take the gradient. And the gradient is going to give us a vector field that tells us where h is increasing. And this vector field is always going to be perpendicular to the contour line because the component of the gradient of the contour line must be zero because on the contour line h is constant. So we don't really have what we need, but you can see that we are close. We are already getting the partial derivatives, but they are in the wrong order and with the sign wrong. So what we want to do to get s is just do a rotation, a 90 degree rotation clockwise from here to here. And now the P component is going to become the X component, and the X component is going to become the minus P component. So we're basically uh, switching the, the place and adding a minus sign, and this is exactly what S is. Now, the gradient was perpendicular to the contour line. Now, if we're rotating, and since we're rotating in that degree, this new field is going to be parallel to the contour line. In fact, the contour line of H are going to be the field lines of S. 
Now, if we take it all together, we know that the field line of S are the contour lines of H, and the field line of S are also the trajectory for our point particles. So what we're basically saying is that the trajectory of our point particles are going to be the lines of equal H. Okay, so we sort of have now a more understanding of what this equation is, is doing. So let's recap it. So we have the first part of the equation. It's going to tell us that the tangent of the trajectory in phase space is equal to S. And we can take this and write it in a slightly different way. And from here we see that the state at time t plus dt is a function of the state of time t. So given x of, at time t and p of time t, we can calculate the state x and p at time t plus dt. These two are absolutely equivalent. The second part of the equation that is telling us that the s is the gradient of h rotating 90 degrees and the field lines of s are equal are the lines of equal h, well, we can rewrite this just by saying that the diverging of s is equal to zero. And you can see this is a definition of the divergence. If you take this and you substitute it here, and if you take this and substitute here, is substituted here, you can see that it's actually true. So another way of saying this is that S is solenoidal, that has zero divergence. And another way of saying that S is solenoidal is just saying that if we take any closed boundary and we measure the flux across that boundary, the flux of S, of S is going to be zero. And another equivalent way to say that is that if we have a region of phase space and we move it according to S, the area of that region is going to be preserved. As I said, this statement, this statement, this statement, and this statement are all equivalent. You can take one of them and all the others are implied. So instead of thinking of Hamiltonian mechanics for one degree of freedom as uh, uh, those two equations, we can think about it as these two statements. That the state at time t plus dt is a function of the state at time t, and that the flux across any closed boundary is zero, or, same thing, that any region evolved in time preserve its area. Now the question is going to be, what is the meaning of this in terms of the physics? And we're going to see this in the next section.